good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to speak to you a little bit about uh, a copper gold exploration company that's uh, focused in eastern Australia. Uh, we're listed here in Canada and in, in the US. I will be making lots of forward-looking statements. Pretty much everything I'll say will be a forward-looking statement in one way or other. So what are we doing? Um, we're exploring for a true tier one scale copper gold porphyry deposits in northern New South Wales. This is a fabulous uh, mining friendly jurisdiction that actively encourages uh, mining and investment. I'm going to talk about our portfolio. Uh, we have uh, the largest uh, land position uh, of exploration licenses in the state of New South Wales with over 7,000 square kilometres of ground. This is a massive piece of, of tenement and uh, it extends over about 300 kilometres from north to south. We're unusual in the fact we've already been able to attract a uh, partnership with uh, one of the world's uh, uh, biggest uh, gold mining companies, Anglo Gold Ashanti. Uh, we've got a multi-year exploration alliance uh, with them right now, despite being relatively early stage. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about the strategy. And a uh, key part of this is drill testing targets that have never been drilled before. Everything we're going to be talking about here is brand new and uh, it's never been touched with a drill before. Just before we get into that, a little bit about the corporate uh, structure here. Uh, currently 16 million market cap. Uh, we've got a couple of major institutions as, as shareholders uh, at Crescat Capital and uh, Resource Capital Funds, RCF. The management team still owns about 28% of the company. Uh, retail shareholders uh, own about a third, and uh, the rest is with uh, the sort of the institutions. So our, our top 10 shareholders own about uh, two thirds of the company. Just won't get into the team too much uh, due to the time constraints, but uh, we've got a nice mix of technical and uh, sort of capital market experience here. The, the board is uh, heavily weighted towards uh, geologists, uh, including myself, our chairman, Wendell Zerb, is a geologist, former mining analyst at uh, Canaccord and uh, Pacific International for many years as well. But I will just draw your attention to the, uh, the gentleman at the bottom of the screen there, Dr. Douglas Haynes. Uh, Douglas Haynes was the former chief geologist for a very successful, iconic Australian mining group called Western Mining. And Douglas was involved in a lot of big discoveries, particularly in Australia. And most uh, really was uh, the big success was the discovery of Olympic Dam. That's his big claim to fame. But more recently, uh, after he retired from, uh, from BHP as the chief geologist, he went on and uh, did the targeting that discovered the massive uh, Kamoa discovery in the DRC. And he won the International Discovery Award during the PDAC for that back in 2015. So a very technically driven uh, board. So what are we doing over in uh, New South Wales as a little Canadian company? Well, we're exploring the uh, copper gold porphyry belt. It's called the Macquarie Arc, which is host to a number of very large uh, mines. Uh, and you can see there in the, in the gray at the bottom of the screen, this is the belt of rocks that host these big mines. The big one in the belt is Cadia. Uh, this was uh, Newcrest Mining's flagship opera operation, now Newmont. So it produces close to a million ounces of gold a year, despite being a copper mine. The other two big ones in the belt is North Parks and Cowell. Uh, these are owned by Evolution Mining, it's a big, uh, big Australian mining company. And critically, these are big block cave underground porphyry operations. These are massive, uh, long life, low grade operations that uh, are mined uh, from underground. The other great thing about New South Wales, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's very mining friendly. There's a lot of grants available for exploration and uh, a lot of uh, pre-competitive data available for us to use, which we have exploited extensively. And then the other thing to note on this particular uh, slide is, uh, is our land position. So our land position there is in orange, and uh, you can sort of see that pale orange color there as well. That represents sedimentary cover that's sitting on top of the prospective geology, masking the underlying geology. So we've acquired essentially the top two thirds of this belt, extending about 300 kilometers. And this just gives you a sense of the, the terrain we're dealing with. Uh, for the most part, it's uh, flat uh, bushlands, it's cattle country, it's easy to get around, there's a big network of roads servicing big uh, cattle stations and whatnot, but uh, it's a beautiful place to operate and ultimately very cost effective as well. We're not dealing with uh, high altitude or jungle or seasonality here, it's uh, a very simple place. The only real challenge we've got to deal with is the cover that's sitting on top of the prospective geology. 
And this just gives you a sense of the, uh, the spread of the targets here. So we have this uh, arrangement with Anglo Gold and we're systematically drill testing a whole series of very large uh, alkalic copper gold porphyry targets spread, spread out over about 300 kilometers. And uh, as Joe uh, can attest, it takes about uh, four hours to drive from north to south with our land package on, on paved roads. It's a big piece of ground and it truly is a strategic block that uh, obviously was a key part of attracting uh, Anglo Gold uh, to, uh, to the company. And really this, this is the image that sort of explains the opportunity. Uh, we're exploring that concealed northern extension of the belt. So these two maps are the same scale as you can sort of see. The one on the left is a simple geological map. The one on the right is a geophysical magnetic map. And what this really shows is the southern part of the belt which has been extensively explored, uh, it, but uh, it disappears under the cover to the north and continues to the north, and really very little data uh, due to the sedimentary cover. And what started this was this Dr. Douglas Haynes uh, basically built a beautiful interpretive geological map extrapolating the known outcropping geology to the south all the way to the north, and he, in doing so, identified about 35 very large targets he considered analogous to these major mines uh, located further to the south, and critically, they'd never been drill tested before. So that was the exciting thing here. Big copper gold targets, uh, two hours up a paved highway from uh, one, of the, one of the world's biggest mines. So what do we do? How do we go about exploring through this cover? Well, we've got a unique uh, rig. You don't really get these rigs, uh, draw rigs in North America. This is a dual purpose rig. It's what we call a mud rotary rig. This is essentially old technology used for drilling essentially water wells. So we, we drill through the sedimentary cover. We don't uh, sample this. We just need to get through this as quickly, as cost effective as possible. Once we hit the prospective basement, we then drill short core holes at the bottom. So we typically drill between 20 and 50 meters of core in each hole, with two to three holes in each target, and we take as much information as we can from the short intervals of core. We're looking for a sort of an alteration halo around these, these porphyry deposits, and if we're seeing the right characteristics in the form of fable geochemistry or alteration, we'll then drill further step out holes or uh, deeper holes, depending on the circumstance. And this is a sort of a model we're looking for. So this is a magnetic map. Um, so the warmer colors here, the red colors here, represent highly magnetic rocks. The cooler purple colors or blue colors represent uh, rocks with low, low uh, magnetic characteristics. But broadly speaking, we're looking for complex areas in the magnetics. And uh, specifically within that, we're looking for magnetic lows in the blue, surrounded by intense magnetic highs. And we've been targeting these, uh, these systems throughout the belt. And we've been quite successful. This is from our Duck Creek project. We've had a lot of strong alteration, a lot of interesting geochemistry, and critically rocks of the right age, which is a key component of this, uh, this program. We've not yet drilled that big boom of a hole that's getting uh, the, the market really excited, but we've got a lot of smoke, and we've got to certainly confirm we've got the right, the right system. And this is really what attracted uh, Anglo Gold to the company. And this is just a simple cartoon of a sort of a geological cross section here. So this is a slice, essentially sort of, sort of a hypothetical model, typical of those uh, deposits uh, we, we see throughout the belt. So as you can see on the top there, there's a young uh, sedimentary cover masking the, uh, the, uh, the porphyries, potential porphyries. And then we sort of have concentric zones of alteration in a very simplistic manner around these porphyry systems. And these systems are very vertically extensive, almost tube-like in form, but with sort of concentric zones of alteration around them. And by drilling down to the sedimentary cover, we can get a sense of where we are relative to where we need to be. And we use these two to three holes to sort of vector in uh, to uh, hopefully the, the sweet spot. And then really, just to kind of wrap up here, this is our, our key agreement with Anglo Gold. It's a four-stage agreement. We're currently in phase one, comprising about 30,000 meters of drilling. We're spending $10 million. Uh, Anglo Gold is spending $10 million. After that first phase, uh, they can then select up to five projects where they can earn up to 65% by spending 27 million uh, Australian dollars on each particular project. And then to get to 75, they've got to deliver a pre-feasibility study. So it's a very rich uh, deal for a small company like ours. We receive a 10% management fee for uh, operating this, uh, this program, which has kept our treasury in good stead. 
But ultimately, it's a, a very aggressive program for uh, a small company like ours. Uh, really, the story right now is about drill, drill news. Uh, we're in the midst of about a 30,000 meter drill program as part of phase one. This, so the news flow really coming out of the company over the next 12 to 18 months is all about drilling, as well as uh, first pass drilling on uh, a lot of these targets which have yet to be touched, as well as some deep drilling on uh, a couple of projects that look very promising. So really, that, that's it. I mean, we're exploring for big copper gold targets in New South Wales. We own 100% of the assets, very large land position, big strategic association with Anglo Gold Ashanti, and we're aggressively drilling right now, all fully funded by, by Anglo Gold. Thank you very much. Thank you.